Welcome to worship today. Pray God's blessings on you as we worship together this morning. As you can see, we're uh, decorated for a vacation school with tomorrow. And uh, we'll be for three days, 9.30 to 11. What are the hours? 9 to 11.30. 9 to 11.30. Ooh, I would have been late if I showed up at 9.30. Um, so we look forward to that and request your prayers uh, for all who attend and that people's hearts and, and minds would be challenged and, and nurtured and, and we would be built up in our faith. So um, keep us in your prayers. Uh, we have our offering basket, just to alert you, and, and Daryl was wondering about the yield sign that's right behind it, so I think he decided we have to yield all of our, our wallets and our purses as we come up for communion. Um, there is a plate in the back, too, if, if you wish to uh, give an offering this morning. I think that is, I'll share some announcements before you leave today at the end, but um, I invite you in, in a moment of silence to center your hearts and your minds and, and then Ari will help us begin, but let's take a moment of silence. I invite you to stand as we begin with our prayer confession. The readings for today go with Vacation Bible School. Um, one of the readings that the lectionary has for today is Psalm 85, and so our prayer confession is, is based on Psalm 85. So please join me. O Lord, be gracious to us. Look upon your people with mercy. Forgive our sin. Bring us back again as you have done before. Speak your word to us, a word of peace as we follow you in faith and trust. For we know without doubt that your salvation is near. Your spirit fills this place. Let your unfailing love and truth come together among us. Pour out your goodness upon us. Hear the good news. In and through Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. The Lord strengthen our hearts in holiness as we walk with God and make our love overflow for each other and for everyone. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And we sing together.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please be seated. Our prayer of today. O oh God, from you come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 through 13. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at a tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with, his, with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? And hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is from Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 to 46. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Word of God, word of life.
Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Today's gospel comes from Matthew chapter 28. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. The Gospel of our Lord. You can be seated, and if any kids want to come forward for the children's time. Every one of you are all children, I know. So, I have a special one to tell you today. How's that? Good morning. So, you know, at each... Oh, this is loud. Did you know how loud that was? Okay. Each one of us, at some time in our life, have made a bad choice. I know I have. We are not perfect. We make mistakes. It may be that we did something to displease our parents or our teacher. Perhaps we did something or said something to hurt a brother or a sister or a friend. You know the feeling. It feels awful. So when you have been in that sort of situation, it may surprise to have someone say, I love you, but I don't like what you did. Let's see if we can learn from this. When you're expecting punishment and your parent or teacher helps you understand that what you did was wrong and then teaches you how to make better choices, you know what that's called? It's called mercy. Mercy is receiving kindness when you don't deserve it. So I got a special story I want to tell you. This is one that I just heard many, many years ago, and I love it. One day, a mom was cleaning in the living room, and she turned over the couch cushion. What she discovered was a shock to her. You want to know what it was? No guesses? Okay. On the bottom side of the cushion was a large pink nail polish stain. Oh, no. The dad and mom collected the three daughters and brought them into the room where they began to plan to interrogate them. But before they could even begin to ask questions, the middle daughter broke down. She rushed from the room and dashed up the stairs. The dad followed her into a room where he found her in the corner of her closet, sobbing with her head between her knees. He rubbed her back and helped her get under control and then he took her back downstairs. As they sat together in the room with the nail polish stained couch, the daughter asked in a fear-filled voice, do you still love me? The mom got down on the floor next to her daughter and she said, honey, there is no stain in the world big enough to ever make us stop loving you. The 
that story tugs at my heart. Every one of us is a bit like her. We've created stains that we hope no one will ever see. We spend our days trying to hide the things that we've done that we know are wrong. Our sins lurk in the background and we do everything we can to try to cover up our past sin. And instead of admitting who we really are and what we've really done, we try to pretend that we're good and that our stains don't exist. Somehow we think God will love us more if he doesn't see our stains. We fail to realize that God loves us even more than her parents love her. We fail to recognize that God already knows about all our stains and somehow he loves us anyway. All we have to do is look up at the cross with his outstretched arms, Jesus says, you want to know how much I love you? I love you this much. Let's bow our heads and say a prayer. God, thank you for these children that are so innocent. Please watch over them and guide them in your ways. Amen. Thank you. Want a snack? You're welcome. Thank you, folks. Good morning. Today, as Pastor Steve said earlier, we kick off our three-day vacation Bible school this week. Our theme on the cover of your bulletins is Concrete and Cranes. It's all about construction and building a strong foundation of faith for life. As I thought about what to share today and what this theme means and how all of these stories relate to our daily themes this week, I was reminded of when I was in high school. It was the summer before 10th grade. And my parents had just gotten divorced the year before. My mom had moved to Washington and I'd been living with my dad and some family in Wisconsin and I had not been going to church. Then in July, my mom and stepdad came and we drove cross country and we arrived in Tacoma on July 4th and it should be a new beginning. It should be exciting. And yet I was at a loss. I felt like everything in my life had crumbled around me. As that month went on, and my mom, in her wisdom, reached out to the youth director at church and knew that VBS was happening and signed me up as a volunteer. <laughs> no, I don't remember the theme, the music, or any of the passages from that VBS, but I do remember the sense of welcome it was like I was in the midst of this rock pile right here with caution tape all around me trying to push people away. Don't come close. I didn't want them to see just how broken I felt inside. But the people in the congregation, it was like they didn't even see it, the caution tape, and they came close anyways. And they told me that I was never beyond God's love, that I have value and worth right now as I am, and that God is always with me. Well, that same hope of sharing God's love, of telling kids that they have value and worth and that God is always with them, that's our hope for this week of VBS in Concrete and Cranes. We have 40 kindergarten to fifth graders registered and over 30 volunteers from sixth graders to over 60 year olds coming to spend time hearing this message. On Monday, we get to hear that story we heard of Matthew's calling. And it's interesting to me that Matthew was despised by those who thought they knew God the best. See, Matthew was an outcast and unwelcome. And yet in the midst of an ordinary day for Matthew, Jesus shows up and Jesus tells Matthew to follow him. But that goes against the exclusivity of the religion at that time. So as the Pharisees looked at what Jesus was doing, they wondered what could Jesus possibly see in Matthew? Why would he choose Matthew? Do we ever look around at that same, with that same wonder? What is it about that person who pushes all of our buttons and what does Jesus see in them? Or that person who just can't seem to fit in into my circle, so why should I welcome them? 
why would Jesus want me to be around that person? Sometimes we've all had this thought, I know I have, I don't need to invite that person, somebody else will. I don't need to make room at the table, somebody else will. But that's not Jesus. That's not a strong foundation. And then I wonder if Matthew thought that same thing about himself. And do we ourselves see, as Steve called them, our stains and wonder what is so lovable about us? This last week, I was watching a show that just came back called Leverage, Redemption. It's a crew of these Robin Hood thieves trying to make the world a little bit better place. When they encounter someone who's kind of stolen their stories and told their secrets, and they end up finding out that he was a friend of a friend, and that's how he knew all of these stories, and in a low point decided he needed to become somebody other than himself. Because being anyone else was better than being himself. So this crew had stepped in and they end up helping him find the one thing that makes him special, his superpower, if you will. It wasn't their choice to step in and help. They were mad at him. They didn't really like him, but they did it anyways. See, Jesus not only spends time with Matthew and other tax collectors and sinners, but he looks at their stains and chooses to eat with them, to break bread with them, to share in community with them. That's what we're called to do. That's the strong foundation. That's mercy in the midst of our stains. And just like Matthew, Jesus chooses to love us right now as we are. We don't have to earn it. We just have to accept it. And sometimes accepting Jesus' love is very much tied to believing that we are worth being loved. And on Tuesday at VBS, we get to look at the story of Jesus praying in the garden. And I can't even imagine the sorrow and the pain that Jesus must have been feeling as he went in to pray that day. Jesus doesn't really question if saving of humanity needs to happen, or if the people are worth being saved, at least that we hear. It seems that what he really questions is if the crucifixion must happen, and if it has to be him that has to do it. Isn't that funny, though? We always wonder that we can't question God, but God doesn't tell us that, because even here, Jesus pushes back. All God asks of us is that we listen in prayer and that we let it be God's will, not our own wants and desires that lead us. Because ultimately, we all have a choice. Just like it needed to be Jesus' choice to die for the world, to pay that cost for us all, Jesus had to believe there was worth for every sinner to be saved. Paul reminds us that there's absolutely nothing that can separate us from this amazing gift. Our worth is now. It's who we are right now, not who we will become. And Jesus chose to die for who we are right now. But this gift doesn't end with the death on the cross. We know that there's more. And on Wednesday of VBS, we dig into the resurrection story and the Great Commission. And we end our VBS time hearing this promise that Jesus conquered death and the grave, but that's not it, and sends us out with a mission. And it seems that building the strong foundation isn't the end. There's still work to do because we're to invite and share this love with the rest of the world. And we do this knowing that if Jesus is with us till the end of the age, then Jesus' love for the world must be with us to the end of the age. This is great news. This is a promise worth trusting in. Now, if you're like Austin Rohrbach, you'll notice I said nothing about the wise and foolish builder story. And that parable is included in the curriculum, but we're not using it for our three days. But I'm gonna use it to end today. Just a refresher. A wise man built his house on a strong foundation. When the storms came, his house stood firm. 
The foolish man built on a weak foundation. When the storms came, his house crumbled all around. While we all strive and hope to be like the wise man, sometimes we don't always follow through, do we? Perhaps there are a few cracks that were never really addressed. A few weak spots of doubts and questions that we left unwrestled with. Or maybe a few holes or gaps that we missed some study and we didn't quite fill those in. And then the storms come and we might find that we're not quite on as solid of a foundation as we thought. And things start to crumble around us. But there's still hope. See, we're given this community this church, this bigger world church, that can offer this lifeline, much like my high school youth director and that church offered me in high school, to go past the caution tape, to slow down and help rebuild the foundations. And in the slowing down, in the rebuilding, we might find that our foundations become a little more solid than they ever were before. I'm grateful for the experience I had in high school. I told my mom this this morning. I said, you're not allowed to feel guilty about this at all because it's in the highs and lows of that story that have led me to who I am today. Because in high school, in college, and even still today, I continue to go through the rubble and debris of my beliefs. I tell people sometimes, I only know what my foundation is. I'm not sure what I believe on certain things sometimes. And that's okay, because I continue to study and ponder and evaluate what needs to be at the foundation. And I try to remember, at the center of it all, Jesus loved me on my worst day, Jesus loved me on my best day, and every day in between. And I should show that same love for all those I share this world with. Because, as our theme verse says from Philippians, I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Jesus is our strong foundation. Amen.
continue with our prayers. Let us pray. Lord God, we pray for your presence and your blessing on our Vacation Bible School this coming week, that seeds of faith are planted and that faith is nurtured and strengthened in all who participate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those living in the neighborhoods around us. We pray especially this morning for families who are struggling in Palisades Park next door and behind the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the Puyallup School District's Summer Learning Academy, and especially for Fir Grove as one of the host sites. S specifically, we pray for remedies and solutions to transportation woes, that these logis logistical issues can be resolved and successful learning can happen so that the children participating will benefit from the program. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for the Puyallup School Board, both now and, and leading up to, and especially during their next meeting in August. We pray that tensions would be calmed. We pray for help in conversation and debate, that it would be civil and productive. Help people to set aside heightened passions. We pray for good listening and a productive meeting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord God, you are the source of our healing. So we pray for strength for all who feel faint. We pray that you would give courage to those who are afraid, bring wholeness to those in need, and comfort those who mourn. We continue to pray for Julie, for Kelly, for Grandma Dot and Steve Olson, for Doug and Debbie and Mike and Katie, for Lori. We pray again for Tara Sachs and her mom, for Jessica's family in Guatemala, for their safety and health and peace. And at this time, you are invited to lift additional prayers, either out loud or silently in your hearts. For Karen and Turi and Matt and their family, uh, following the death of Jack. Lord, restore to wholeness all who are in any need in these days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we lift our prayers to you, O God, as we trust in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to turn your attention to, uh, it's rather a makeshift altar, but to this table and this meal that, that is here. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body, people of every nation and tongue. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And join me as we pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever.
Christ has set this table and provided this meal for us. And there is a place for you. So come and be fed, be nourished, be strengthened in your faith. You may be seated. The ushers will invite you to come up the center aisle. Uh, the first station is, is bread. If you need a gluten-free wafer, let your server know. We can get that for you. And then after you've received the bread uh, in the trays or empty cups, we'll pour wine from the chalice or there's grape juice on the inside ring of each tray. And then just return down the side aisles back to your seats.
please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world as you do. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. on you in the week ahead. Remember to pray for our Vacation Bible School this week, Monday through Wednesday. You could even pray on Thursday if you want uh, for that. And Wednesday night, the VBS culminates with the food trucks again. It'll be another week of food trucks. So that's from 6 to 8 on Wednesdays. And let's see, finally, next Sunday is, remember, we're uh, preparing for uh, the building to be painted, painted and windows to be replaced, so we'll begin worship at 9.30, about a half hour or so, and then a couple of hours of cleanup, and come back for communion, and then a church picnic. So lots going on next week, more information to come during the week. So come dress to work, leave your tie and your suit at home next week. Go in God's peace. We are the body of Christ. Happy birthday to you.